back, please welcome the artistic director of the San Jose Repertory Theater celebrating their 30th anniversary, Rick Lombardo. Thank you. Hey, Rick, thank you for being here today. You bet. It's my pleasure. Well, before you and I talk, we have a clip that we want to show from a play at the Repertory Theater, Great. and uh, you're going to tell us a little bit more about it. Okay. She's playing here the fictional character called Alberta Pearl Johnson, and actually this is one of my one of my favorite plays that I've directed in the last few years. It started our season. It's called Black Pearl Sings, and it's set to, in the 1930s. The first act starts in Texas. Second act goes to Greenwich Village in New York, and and Pearl Johnson is uh, in a Texas prison farm, and uh, this woman who is a researcher for the Library of Congress is trying to archive uh, folk music from the 19th century. And she's trying to find, her, her quest is to find a song that has come over from Africa, that has been kept alive, passed down through oral tradition. So she's looking for incarcerated black women in the South who have great voices and know some songs. And the whole play is about this relationship that, that these two women, Susanna and Pearl, develop. And, and Pearl is this astonishing singer. That was, that was actually her voice? That was Jane Jones, yeah, who's an, an amazing she gospel singer. She sounded like singer. Mahalia Jackson or yes, something. Yes, yeah, yes, she's, she's something else. And we're going to be doing this show. It's moving on from the rep, and uh, several other uh, regional theaters around the country are going to be doing it next year. So it's a very exciting project. Okay, San Jose Repertory Theater, when did your season begin, and how are things going? It's gone great. Uh, we began in September with Black Pearl. Um, right now we're, we're finishing up our holiday show, which is a new musical about Ginger Rogers called Backwards in High Heels. We're going to go through June. Uh, we'll end the year with the world premiere of a new play by really one of the Bay Area's premier playwrights, uh, Philip Cangotanda, a play called Love in American Times. It's a new American comedy. Um, in between, we'll be doing West Coast premieres and some revivals. So we do, we do a little bit of everything. So I have a question. You've been doing this a while now. 25 years. I yeah, think I've been directing for 25 years, yeah. So when you see something new and someone brings you something, how do you know if audiences are going to like it? Is there something inside you that, yeah. a little something that goes off or a little bell? I try, you know, when I read a play for the first time, I try to turn off all of the experience and just try to relate to it the way I think the audience will the first time. And I, I trust that if it moves me when I read it, and if it keeps me excited and interested, I want to keep turning the page, then I, then I believe that I can find a way to, to make that exciting for an audience, too. And do you find most of your people locally, the people that are actually in the place? A um, little bit of both. Those two women in Black Pearl were both uh, from New York City. Um, we uh, bring actors in from L.A., but I would say more than half of our actors um, come from the Bay Area. We're really committed to the local community, too. So there are a lot of theaters in the Bay Area. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, that's a lot of competition. You know, to make sure you got some good stuff. Yeah, but there's a lot fresh. of people here too. There's, there's a lot of people who love <laughs> Good theater. point. Good yeah. point. So um, you're finding good things. You got good works, and no problems finding something to keep audiences. To there are a lot of great plays. I'll tell you where where it sometimes gets tricky. Oh, where? Is is some of our best Bay Area actors. Um, you may need to call them up a year in advance and say, you know, oh. I really want you to do this project because they they may be in demand. I'm, I'm really excited because the, the next show I'm going to be directing at the Rep is an English play called The Dresser. And uh, the two actors in it are two of the Bay Area's most beloved stage actors, Ken Ruta, who has been acting in the Bay Area for uh, more than 30 years, one of the founding members of uh, ACT under Bill Ball, and James Carpenter, who has been on every stage in the Bay Area, ACT, Berkeley Rep, San Jose Rep, Cal Shakes. So, um, uh, I, I love them working with those two guys, but I had to let them know last year that, that we were going to do this project. Yeah. So as a director, you know, you see the movies and the directors have the capes and they're all over the top. Are you like that? <laughs> do, I, do I look like that? <laughs> you know, you come down and it's like, we will begin now. You know, directors, they're no. so... 
No, it's it's a different world now. <laughs> um, we we try to keep it fun, keep it very collaborative. You know, actors um, actors have wonderful ideas of their own, and playwrights have ideas, and designers have ideas, and my job is to sort of navigate all those folks so that we're all telling the same story, we're all going to be in the same world uh -huh. on stage, um, and, and help them bring out the best of their work. But I, I don't want to tell them what to do. Help them find it. Help them find it. Now, how did you find theater? You've been in theater quite a while. Yeah, I, you know, I didn't set out to, to be an artist or, or go into the theater. I was going to be a doctor. And um, uh, while, I, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> while I was in college, <laughs> Um, I auditioned for a play, and then somebody asked me to direct a one-act play, and I thought, why would you think I could do that? Um, but I did it, and these light bulbs went off, and, um, and I thought, you know, I think that the things that I can do, which is analyze a text and, and imagine what things could look like on stage, um, maybe I can be a stage director. And I, I never look back, and I, I've been doing it ever since. So is your, is your life action-packed? It life seems like it'd be very interesting. You know, there are different parts to it. Making plays is enormously interesting, and, and the artists are forever interesting to, to, to be with. But running a nonprofit theater, the other things that I do, we do a lot of fundraising. Ah, so, um, maybe not so interesting. That's the part where you're asking people for money all the time and, and making doing things like this, you know, making the case for live theater. Um, let's make sure that people still want to do this instead of just looking at their handheld devices, you know, five hours a day. Do people get it when you tell them, you know, there is a need out there and people can always give? Do they get it? They do, especially when we talk about the things that we do with young people in the schools. Because, um, like this year we started a new program where we brought a play directly into schools all throughout the South Bay. Uh, more than uh, 6,000 kids wow. saw a production of The Glass Menagerie in their own schools. And when I go to talk about that, that's very, people get that. And they, they really want to line up behind it. Great. Well, thank you so much for being here today. For more information and for ticket information, please log on to sjref.org. That is it. Thank you for joining us. Have a nice week and happy holidays. <laughs> wow. I don't think you